Great. Um, good afternoon, everybody. So um, my name is Thomas Louis. I'm here presenting this work on behalf of Dr. Uh, James Drake, who unfortunately couldn't attend. And really, this presentation is a, a representation of a joint project between your University Health Network, Toronto Western, uh, Phillips Healthcare, Thunder Bay Regional Health, as well as Sick Kids to develop a transcranial system for pediatrics. So we've seen uh, very nicely in the earlier presentations, uh, transcranial um, error guide focus hole channel is available and developed by Insight Tech, and it's used by various trials for a central tremor. Um, but one of the, the problems we find is that the, the transcranial systems are quite large, and they also require fixation screws that are applied to actual the patient. Um, afterwards, the patient is placed into the silicone cooling bag uh, for cooling. Now, if you contrast that on the picture I showed on the right-hand side there, for those who are familiar, that's a, a neonatal uh, MRI incubator that's used for scanning. And inside there, there's actually a neuroimaging coil with the baby sitting inside. So our project was to investigate whether if we can develop a transcranial system given the constraints of the incubator as well as the MRI bore space itself. So our motivation comes from two primary areas. One is uh, IVH or prematurity. Um, this is a case where this is a slow bleed that happens inside the brain. And we're trying to investigate if MR-guided focus ultrasound can be used um, using a variation of boiling histotripsy to actually deform thrombolysis. And the second uh, clinical indication is to look at epilepsy. And these are medically refractory cases where the patient is no longer responding to medications. Um, here we've selected targets that would be normally surgically resected. There was a nice earlier presentation about hypothalamic hematomas, and that's actually one of our first cases. And we worked with Dr. Hodai's lab out of Toronto Western to actually do the DTI mapping and to look at the fiber tracks for the fornix, the corpus callosum, and the uh, anterior fornix to, as representative targets that we want to see the, the white fiber tracks pre and post treatment to see if they actually get ablated and, and actually separated. So in this case, our objective is actually to look at the clinical, current clinical systems are large and requires the fixation, which are incompatible with the neonate patients. And our goal is to really bring the ultrasound to the patient itself. Uh, we're looking at this from two angles. One is to actually design and develop a, a hyper robot that actually has a neurointerventional coil for the treatment, as well as designing a software plan for the planning and for the selection itself. So HOPE is really built around three interfaces. One is a treatment planning software that is written in Python, and this is the glue that actually talks to the robot and talks to the coil and the treatment transducer itself. Um, through the sauna of electronics, we've actually built uh, a five degree of freedom robot shown on the top left hand side there. And there we've also custom designed an eight channel phase array coil that fits inside the incubator. So the baby is actually allowed to actually sit inside and be imaged and treated at the same time, providing access. This is actually a detailed picture of the positioner. There's a, it's a five degree freedom robot with a five kilogram payload. There are uh, J1, J3 are your translational components and JJ4 uh, allowed you to actually pitch transducer and uh, access different areas. So with the additional degrees of freedom, we're actually able to enlarge the workspace. Uh, the green represents the mechanical steering of placing the transducer at different angles to access the neonatal brain, and the red includes the electronic steering. And with the combination of the two, we actually get a good range to cover both the sagittal views of the ventricles. As if we look at coronally, we are able to cover both the left and right ventricles of the, the, the neonatal brain, allow us to perform epilepsy treatments and perform thrombolysis work. So this is the actual physical robot itself. It's been uh, physically f completed and it's going to testing in the fall. The uh, red arrows rep actually represent the degrees of freedom. And here I show you actually the transducer and the coupler that's actually um, holding the 256 phase element transducer that's actually going to be positioned by the robot to actually deliver the high food treatment to the, the neonatal patient. So this is the control software, so it's a bit hard to see, but the first picture shows a, a four screenshot for the MR thermometry that gives you your sagittal, chrono, and axial views. There is also a newer field slice, and there's individual little tabs. There's one for hyperthermia and for ablation treatment. One is actually to perform histotripsy or cavitation-based uh, therapies, and the last is actually to perform the robot control on the position and the registration. So we've built a little uh, phantom that has vitamin E capsules to do a registration, and it's imaged using a T1 sequence of the cardiac coil. Uh, an algorithm was developed to do the thresholding, the selection, the k-means to actually give us the registration to go from the image space and to the robot itself. 
Uh, we tested the cap station, which showed quite well. Uh, we tested our two sequences for 400 watts and 900 watts, which gave us um, representative cases that we've seen the area of cavitation, and we see the, the subharmonic emissions. So with that, I really hope I, I give you a bit of a preview of what the system of what HOPE is supposed to be. This is supposed to be an MR-guided focused ultrasound system for neonatal patients. The system allows for ablation, hyperthermia for cavitation-based therapy, as well as the larger workspace that allows us to access various areas. So with that, I'd just like to thank the research teams across the various sites and our funding sources. Any questions? I think it's a great application, taking advantage of an acoustic window that's already there for uh, a number of different kinds of applications. I might have missed it, but how, how, how are you going to fixate the head without pins? Um, and how long would a, would a, a sonication um, interval take in the neonatal incubator? Yeah, so that's one of some of the, the functional aspects that we're going to be investigating in the fall. Um, currently, we know when uh, when the neonates are actually sonic or when they're actually imaged, they're actually given sort of a, a sort of a sugar water to actually keep them still in that case. And I think that's what we're going to be investigating with some of the in vivo porcine animals that we're going to do in terms of the fixation using either sandbags or placement to hold it steady. In this case, the robot actually applies enough pressure to actually keep the coupling between the uh, the transducer and the head itself. Too. 